This is very disturbing, but at the same time, it is to be expected. It's what was told it's going to happen. The world is not going to go closer to God. It's not going to grow closer to sound doctrine. As a matter of fact, Paul says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's clearly here. As a matter of fact, there's an affront to sound doctrine. There is a an all an all out offensive uh, an attack being mounted against sound doctrine. So I want you to hear this. We're going to look at this video, this little clip in its entirety. And we're going to come back and talk to it, talk about it again. But this is this professor or this class at a particular th uh, seminary that really should not be a seminary. Um, and he's talking about his class, which is queer theology. My name is Patrick Cheng, and I'm the visiting professor of Anglican studies at Union Theological Seminary. The title of my course is Queer Theology. The single most important reason why I'm passionate about teaching this course is that I grew up being told that you can't be LGBTQ or queer and religious. And not only is that not true, you can be both. But really, queerness is at the heart of Christian theology. A large part of queer theology is learning about transgender and non-binary theologies and the experiences of trans and non-binary people. One of the assignments is to create a social media project so that they create something on Instagram or do a podcast or a blog, and then they reflect upon that. And why that's important is that the students actually are able to engage in social justice in a real practical praxis-based way. The queer theology class helps our students advance social justice. Join us to re- Now, you kind of see their agenda and nothing about what he said is biblical, although when you kind of put it in a nice box, a nice, nice tone around it and so forth, a nice setting, and you are cordial and polite, you're a nice guy, saying these things, well, it can be inviting to someone who's unsuspecting, to somebody who doesn't know the Bible or who knows a little bit about the Bible, but wants to be a good citizen, wants to be a nice person, um, and they want to be on the wrong, um, on the right side of history, I should say. Uh, they don't want to be ostracized. They don't want to seem bigoted or hateful or anything like that. Uh, they don't want to seem narrow-minded or outdated, antiquated. They don't want to be any of those things. Uh, they want to be accepted more than anything else, and they can appreciate someone else also wanting to be accepted. And so to them, this might make sense, but this is demonic. This is the opposite of godly. As a matter of fact, you couldn't get further away from being godly. What it is, it's an attempt to distort the gospel, to change it into something that was never meant for. First of all, even if it was something legitimate, let's be clear. Social justice is not the aim of the Bible. It's not the aim of God. Now, in being a good follower of Christ, Will you treat another person justly? Sure. That part goes without saying, but make no mistake about it. Social justice does not have that end in mind. So let's go back and look at this video and let's just see where he's so biblically wrong. My name is Patrick Cheng and I'm the visiting professor of Anglican studies at Union Theological Seminary. The title of Now, let's just be clear. Union Theological Seminary is not a biblically sound seminary. It is a left-leaning seminary. And so without getting into, even if you didn't know about that, even if you had no clue what they were like, the fact that they are allowing this would tell you all you need to know about that seminary. And so if you were planning to go to seminary, take that one off your list of choices. The title of my course is Queer Theology. The single most important reason why I'm passionate about teaching this course is that I grew up being told that you can't be LGBTQ or queer and religious. And not only is that not true, you can be both. Now, the fact of the matter is that is a lie. Uh, where he says that you cannot be LGBTQ, queer, whatever, and a Christian, but the fact of the matter is you can be both. No, you cannot. Now, I've stated this before. If a person is struggling with a sin, and I and I want to be, be clear, struggling with a sin, not if you are embracing a sin. You pick the sin, and it's not just homosexuality. You pick it. Now, people might say, well, why do we only just deal with homosexuality or certain sins? Well, we don't just deal with certain sins. However, there are only a couple of sins that are out there that people are actually and actively promoting as though they are okay. If you come promoting homosexuality as a lifestyle that is acceptable to, the, to Christians, well, now we have a problem. The same thing if you are promoting, I don't know, murder. If there's anyone out there that's promoting any particular sin as a lifestyle that we should embrace and that it can coexist with the Word of God, with Christianity, with the Spirit, well, then we come against that. Anyone that is doing anything, if there's someone that's teaching or embracing something demonic, we naturally have to come against that. This is just one of those things. And so to say that you can be, then now we've got a problem. Why is that a problem? Well, if a person is struggling, 
there are going to be people who are homosexual or who are struggling with it. And their net that needs to be understood. Because remember this, let's go to first John three, nine. He says, no one who is born of God practice sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who practices righteousness is not, oh, I'm sorry, who does not practice righteousness. That's important. Who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So if a person is going to practice sin, let's go to verse eight. The one who practices sin is of the devil. And this is important, the word to practice something that this is your habit, this is your lifestyle. But what about the rest of us who do certain sins and we don't practice it or didn't look like we practice it or maybe from the outside it does look like it. Maybe it, it, it by all accounts it looks like we are because I'm doing the same thing that others um, are as well and so maybe I am. Well, we're going to see how we can distinguish between if a person is doing something and if a person is actually practicing something. And the heart of it, Paul deals with, is the heart, the will, the intent. If there's a person who is homosexual, who is in any particular sin, if they're struggling with it and they don't want to, they don't desire to be gay and Christian, they want to be, they desire to be a Christian, they're struggling with their sexuality or they're struggling with their addiction. Maybe it's a drug addiction. Maybe it's, it's, um, something else, maybe something they're watching, maybe it's something, it, it could be anything. There's a struggle, but they don't want it. That's the difference. Paul makes this statement in Romans chapter seven, starting in verse 18, he says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for the willing is present in me. And that's the key, the willing, the Greek word for there is thelo, which is to desire. I desire to do the right thing. That's the key. And so the willing is present in me, but the doing is uh, of the good is not. The doing, uh, that's not there. I keep doing the things that I don't want to do. He says, for the good that I want, to, that I, want I do not do. But I practice, that, there's that word again, Paul says, I practice the very evil that I do not want to do. And notice the word for want. I practice the very, the very evil that I do not do desire that word thalo i don't desire to do those things and so that's what we can kind of differentiate and so this pastor this preacher this seminary professor is missing the boat and is going to cause others to miss the boat that think that you can embrace the sin and live that lifestyle practice that lifestyle because if you think it's okay then you then it will be okay for you to des desire those things that person desires the sin and possibly not even desire christ because i don't understand how you can desire Christ and still desire the things that are that are antithetical to Christ. You cannot desire him and desire the things that he's against. But really, queerness is at the heart of Christian theology. A large part of queer theology is learning about transgender and non-binary theologies. Okay, now I'll back it up in a second, but he says queer theology is at the heart of Christian theology. No, it's not. It, by the way, there's no such thing as queer theology. There's just theology, the study of God. And God proper. Now you can break these different studies into different little subsections and categories if you want to. That's fine, but not into queer theology. Now you're trying to make that into um, you're viewing God through the lens of a, a queer or LGBTQ lens. That that can't be done, nor should it be done. That is outright blasphemous. It is wrong. It's sin. Uh, is in defiance of God. And the experiences of trans and non-binary people, one of the assignments is to create a social media project so that they create something on Instagram or do a podcast or a blog, and then they reflect upon that. And why that's important is that the students actually are able to engage in social justice in a real practical praxis-based way. The queer theology class helps our students advance social justice. Join now, us. The Bible is not interested in advancing social justice. Certainly not in, in interested in advancing uh, sinful social justice. Does the Bible care about the feelings, the heart, the uh, the lives of people who even might be in sin? Sure, God does care about them, but not so much that we want to keep them in that. That's not the point of the the gospel. Is teaching that we have been given life because of our sin. We can get past that. We don't have to die because of that and go to hell. But then even after becoming a believer, that there's victory over that sinful lifestyle. It's natural for us to want to do the wrong thing. 
but it's also demonic for us to want to promote the wrong thing and to give approval. Remember, Paul also says in, in John, I'm sorry, John, in Romans uh, 1, verse 32, he says, and although they knew, verse 32, the ordinances of God, that those who practice, there that word, who practice such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, look what it says, but they give hearty approval to those who practice them. That's exactly what this seminary professor is doing. I don't know if he is part of that community or not. I don't know if he is or not, but he is doing what Paul says. He is giving hearty approval to those who practice those things. I understand there are more and more people that are coming out because there's more and more folks that are giving them um, the okay, the blessings to get involved in whatever because this didn't work out, that didn't work out. So let's, let me try this with the alphabet community. The fact of the matter is it's a sin and no person should ever call themselves uh, a Christian or a Christian professor if you're going to promote the opposite of Christian values. You cannot be a good Christian. You're not suffering as, as Paul says, I'm sorry, as Peter says, suffering as a good Christian if you are teaching the opposite of what Christ taught and believed. Remember, he's God. And so all of these different sins, they are sins and he cares about. He would not have enumerated those in the scriptures if he did not care about those things. But again, the Bible says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He is literally promoting a class to teach the opposite of Walt, what Paul is saying. And so we know this is going to be the case. I would simply say, and I don't know what you what we could do about it. But I mean, this is their own seminary. But you could obviously see there are going to be more and more progressive people coming out, calling themselves Christians. And I, I think that it'd be hard to state that a progressive Christian is actually a Christian. There might be some that are in this movement that aren't totally sure. They might be new and growing. Um, but a Christian won't be a progressive Christian for long, meaning that if they are a true Christian, they'll leave this. There'll they'll be something that that kind of resonates in them. There's going to be a disconnect with their head and their heart. My heart, I, you know, I want to love people. I want to do the right thing. I want to help people. I want to be godly towards them. But being godly towards them does not mean promoting their sin, teaching them how to live in their sin, ignoring their sin, looking past their sin. That's not being godly. That's not that. Where do we see that in Scripture? What we do see is God helping folks to get past the sin, not to live comfortably in it. That's the person that practices sin. And so if you are progressive, and you are a Christian. Those are two things that don't fit. A square uh, fit into a round hole or a circle fit, however, if I'm, I'm butchering it. But if you are progressive, if you fancy yourself as being progressive, then how do you fancy yourself being progressive as well at the same time fancying yourself being Christian? The two have nothing in common. What fellowship has light with darkness? But what's gonna happen is, just like we were told, the time has come and it's here, it's been here, where evil is good, good is evil. That's what we see. That's what this professor is preaching, what he's promoting. He wants more folks to come. And I, I understand, yeah, they'll get more money in their coffers. But what ends up happening is Satan gets more soldiers for his war. And we need to reject this as often as we can. Amen.